crime and antisocial behaviour. Their approach is about dealing with um, drug crime, knife crime, um, and we, we've had, we had some huge success there. I'm not sure if people really realise across the county over the last five years we've reduced by a quarter the number of people being harmed in drug driven knife violence across the county. And that's not just the way the police county, that's actually feedback from the health service. People going into hospitals, going to see their doctors with knife injuries after knife crime, down by a quarter. Now that is actually what we wanted to achieve over 10 years, we've achieved it over five, but I'm very confident we can do even more there. And then the other real priority for, um, for, for the police service, in my view, is protecting women and girls, driving down domestic abuse, um, not just though, keeping women and girls and other people abused um, in the domestic environment safe in their homes, but also improving safety in public space and in the nighttime economy. So basically working to, 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 keep, to reduce violence against women and girls uh, and sexual violence across the county. Uh, so uh, sort of really key stuff for the, for the police service, for the fire rescue service on top of the door that we mentioned. We need to continue investing in that protection work, um, making sure that we are making buildings safer. Uh, we need to continue investing in both other prevention work and in our uh, response work to make sure that they're in a position to um, be there and save people's lives whenever they need to. Uh, but we also need to make sure we continue to improve the culture and fire rescue service. We've done an awful lot there. Um, so I think it's a better place to work than it used to be on these languages. Um, and I think if we do more, we can become an even better service that's more on the front foot and able to uh, reduce harm across the county. But the key point I wanted to make is we're writing these things now. We are after consultation. There is a survey live online at this very moment. So if any of you haven't filled it out yet, please make sure you do. And Glenn, you've got a you've got a yes. meeting, have you? We have we have paper copies. Of paper copies here too. You, like to, uh, you are you are lucky. Yeah. You, you may not leave without. In fact, <laughs> take, a, take a bundle for your friend. <laughs> we really want to know what you think. Um, we, want to, we want to have the feedback about, about those key priorities. That's enough for me. Um, I don't know. Do, is it, do, I, do you want to say? Do any of you want to say anything? To no, start with, or shall we go? To your I can end? quickly. Go yeah, um, alongside our fire rescue plan, we're doing our own um, community risk management plan as well. Um, coincides with Roger's plans. Um, from 25 to 29, we've got a lot of staff engagement at the moment, a lot of work in groups internally in the fire service. But from October into November, we've done a lot of public engagement as well. So we're on hard copies plus uh, every copies online, and we're all doing a lot of work through social media. So I just wanted to bring to attention really. Um, every service in the country needs to do a community risk management plan and the main aim for us is to um, drive in one direction and become one of the best fire rescue services in the country um, and as Roger said that's putting prevention, protection and response work together to drive us in that direction, to reduce crime, to reduce fire, sorry, uh, and prevent other incidents as well so yeah in October into November please watch out for that one and um, hopefully we can get your feedback and your views on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the two very much stuff that yeah. yeah. But that's probably enough for us. Any questions, comments, thoughts, Laurie, please? I don't think I need one. I don't think I need one. Just one thing. Can we have a knife bit in Rochford? Because uh, I do think it's actually needed. I think the nearest one would be South End. And I don't know, I'm not a rainy councillor. Um, perhaps Danielle can sell this if they've got one in. Uh, rain, but I do think one's needed in the town centre. Yeah, so we we have them at police stations. So we haven't got police no, stations. No, and that's that's the problem we've got. So so we do have one at Rayleigh, um, but without premises for us to keep it on because obviously we need to keep tabs on on the knife bin itself because if someone were to get into it, then that's a very bad thing for us. And there's lots of weapons that potentially in the wrong hand. So um, they do really need to be on police premises for for security reasons. Um, now, funny enough, I know he was talking to uh, Mr. Hurst a minute ago about a uh, potential bit of work we're looking at as a collective around getting a, a hub uh, in Rochford uh, next to the fire station. Um, so if that's successful, then that's something we could explore getting a, a, a knife been put, put to the, the hub in Rochford once. But, but that, that's, you know, very early stages, unfortunately. Can I make a suggestion and look at Rochford Parish Council or Rochford District Council officers? 
offices. Uh, you can't do it in the library. I appreciate that because I've already asked Roger about this on previous occasions. Yeah. But knowing I'm one of the more customers here, and knowing this area, I think it would be essential that you do have it here. And just one other point, I'd like to thank you, Roger, for the last time we had this um, at some golf club out in the sticks. Can't remember where. That I asked if um, we could put the blues on when we said there was hair coursing yeah. in Stanbridge because you could, it's flat. And you're not doing that now, and I believe people are being cautious and caught or whatever. Uh, or the dogs take, I know some dogs have been taken away, so I'll yes. just thank you for that. Thank that's you. That's good. Glad that. Yeah, well, that's good. Well done. <laughs> yes, I'd like to, is it working? Yes, I'd like to ask the fireman. Um, is there any plans for any closures, or can you reassure us that you're not going to be closing any of the fire stations around in the area? I know they're going to get a lot of use now, but that's a testament to the road safety, the safety stuff that we put into place. So can you reassure us that we're going to keep the same number of fire stations? Yeah, I'll hand you over to Roger. Do you want to start one? I think it's probably appropriate for me to answer this, yeah, okay. to answer this because it's fine. It's, 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 my decision's not <laughs> Um, no, there are no plans. And indeed, quite the contrary, actually what we're looking at is, given the expanding population, is there any requirement for any of our stations to be beefed up? Or perhaps even the new ones. Are. Apparently it's even more difficult to have a new fire industry station than it is to, uh, to, to close one. As people get very worried about it. But there's, there, are, there, are, there are no thoughts about plans to close a fire station. Does it say the number of new houses? around here is, is essential that you know they're kept and made and made from times but that's operational discussions between yourselves. So so what we might do is we might move some pumps around, uh, we might make some pump cell time and some pumps on coal to make sure that we're actually optimizing the cover we have in the right place. That's all going to be part of the fire rescue plan and then the CRAB. I don't know if you have any thoughts about where we are with that. No, I think just so uh, what you said, we're really lucky in this part that Essex and the whole time and all the answers that we've got off the Shoe, Rochford, Port Cornish area, all high performing on call stations. So, yeah, like I say, they, they do a fantastic job. And um, a great set of opportunity if anyone's got any family or friends or that wants themselves to join us on call firefighter, as long as you're over 18, you're relatively fit and you're with a fire station, so it should be great to obviously, yeah, get more people along. But yeah, the crews in Rochester do a fantastic job and like, yeah, that will continue to happen. Yeah, but I'd like to commend uh, the, the Portland Fire Station especially for hosting a lot of the local scout groups yeah. and showing the young teams around and they, they have a fabulous time so you're getting people on your side and that's, that's something maybe the, the police are thinking about as well, getting involved with the local scout groups and social groups and coming down and showing what they've got. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, we do get involved in, in a lot of the groups, but it tends to be on a case-by-case -case basis, I suppose, if, you know, contact me in various ways. Uh, we also have uh, our own police scheme as well, which we're, we're looking to, but the, unfortunately, the Rochester one closed down, uh, I think it was about a year ago, uh, just through lack of leaders. So we're, we're doing a big push, uh, centrally, for our local police and support unit, trying to attract more cadet leaders so we can uh, launch the, uh, a new detachment here as well. Um, but yeah, certainly we, we do lots of engagement with, with local scout groups and things, and, and where we can, we, we get, you know, take, take it down to them, more so than them coming to the police stations, because uh, ours are not very exciting, they don't have custody block out on or, or anything like that. So uh, what we tend to do is take it, you know, a carrier with a sort of method of entry kit, public order kit, some uniform and stuff, and just show, them, show them a bit about what we're about. But thank you. Yeah, and maybe just one extra thought on video asked about stations. So we've got actually maybe a sign of what we're having to think is the is the investment we made in shooting this fire station where we spent a million and a half pounds in beefing that. that that's more the way we're trying to do things. I've been told that we're short of money, and I know we're short of money because I didn't ask myself. But if we don't have the ambition, we'll never get the money. So we need to lay out plans, say what we want to do, and then find the money to do it. Not just work out what money we've got and work out how to spend it. We need ambition. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you about it. Sure. Uh, 
Um, I have come here this evening with many intentions of speaking at all, just purely to listen, but you spoke very prolifically about safety on the roads, etc. And I'd just like our Inspector Paul just to be aware, as a resident of Watchwood, um, I'm a very keen off road motorcyclist, um, and therefore it's a strange one for me to bring up. I'm also an electric cycle rider, electric bicycle rider. Uh, but in Watchwood, we do have a very, very prolific problem developing and increasing with youths dangerously riding electric motorcycles. Uh, they're called salons, etc. They're like an off road bike. I know you're aware of them, I know they're county wide. But uh, we talk about safety, safety in the public, safety in the residents, safety in the pedestrians, etc. And I would like you to go away today aware so you can obviously bring it to the attention of your officers that in Rochford it, it is prolific and you're actually in one of the main uh, local estates where there's probably 11 of them alone in this area um, right around. They normally, they normally use you to wear masks and can't see their faces. They deliberately don't wear helmets because they know the policy that they haven't got a helmet on, don't chase them. They know every single alleyway and means of getting about and they will openly, openly go into Rochford Square and park their bikes and go into Greg's, get their food or whatever, and they'll sit on the pavement and they'll ride them. So they're right under your noses. Um, and it's only obviously on the fortunate that you're in the area at the time that you ever catch them, which is 90% of the time, unfortunately, you don't. And they will ride up the one-way streets everywhere, down the alleyways, you name it. And it's only a matter of time it is only a matter of time before Roger sees a young teenager die because of the way they ride their bikes and in the groups and they're often even two up on them, etc. I'm sure the residents here would be aware of that. So I would just like you to go away aware that that is a, an issue in this area that I think for, for life, risk, etc. and safety does need to be made known of. And are they, you, you say they're e motorbikes? Or they're, ele they're, they're electric e motorbikes, yeah, not, not cycles. Cycles. Yeah. They are full blown electric bikes, which they normally shoot up as well. They're capable of doing 50 miles an hour now. Um, and most of them, there's a mate called Sarod, is a good example, and I know because of my motorcycle experience. Um, but as I say, this area, I could literally take you around a few hours in here and show you where some of the issues live. Not that I would obviously. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll be surprised if I'm part of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. sorry, I can just feel the heat coming through the windows there, so I was just trying to alleviate it. It's purely on the subject of one of your key priorities, yeah. I just think that's important. Com completely accept what you're saying, um, fully aware of the issue around them, and yeah, that they sort of exploit grey areas in the law, and perhaps some, some to a degree uh, officers' knowledge uh, on occasions around you know, the, the legislation around electrically assisted pedal cycles. And where that crosses the line into what is, as you say, just an electric motorbike. Yes. Um, so uh, there's, there's, a, there's something to be done around the sort of training and, and knowledge of local officers, which is something we're continuously trying to develop um, and get them more confident in, in using those powers and identifying the difference. Um, and the other part, as you say, there's an awful lot of luck involved, being in the right place at the right time. There, there's certainly um, an issue around A, suitably trained people to pursue them because they, they won't stop. Uh, and when we've got six we trained people, is it still safe to pursue them as, as you've identified? So um, there are issues, uh, that's not to say uh, they're insurmountable issues. Um, we, we're getting better at using the drone team, for example. So if we know there's a hotspot, we've, we've used it for scrambled bikes um, over on um, Woodside uh, Park, um, where we've, we've had a, a key time where the bikes are coming, and we've used the drone team to get up, get some footage off them, perhaps following them home. Um, so that's something we can look at as well. If we identify a particular area and a particular time, because of course you know, we, we can't just have cops sitting there waiting on the off chance someone comes by on one, um, but that might help us um, develop that intelligence picture at least.
We do a lot of joint training with the airport staff as well on crews, and we do a lot of exercises as well. Um, yes, yeah, so we work really close with them, and the crews are over there probably on a quarterly basis at least. And again, because we've got the Rochford, South End, and Lee, all the close proximity to the, to the airport, our response times are, are really, really quick. So yeah, we, we are there a lot. And um, fortunately, we've got a lot of ex fire from the airport that join the fire service. It's a fire service and vice versa, so yeah, we've got a lot of contacts and then plans on our bus, so yeah, always. Yeah. So if anything happens, you've got something in hand, and sort of everybody would get there pretty quick and deal with it. So you know, it's yeah, it's definitely. Um, majority of the time, the airport's on fire service, they're almost uh, instant. Right, they've got their own, uh, I, I did wonder that. Yeah, they've got their own crews over there, so they're on the same sort of four watch systems we are in Essex. However, we go along and back them up, so we lose four pumps and special supplies to go alongside them as well and go to the RVP, wait there and assist when we need to. But most of the time it's dealt with by the actual crew from the airport itself. Okay, thank you. It's just something I was a bit curious about. No, it's fine. Can I just add to that? Sorry. Of course, yeah. yeah. So um, obviously if there were to be an emergency at the airport, we would be working very closely with fire and ambulance um, in dealing with that. Um, so as we assure you from the police inside, we've also got emergency plans in place. Uh, we've got officers trained in a sort of a rolling training program to keep keep officers up to date with what to do. So if the airport say, you know, planes crash or we've got a full emergency coming in, whatever it might be, officers know to go to the RVP, how to set it up, how to give people specific tasks, make sure that access is easy for fire and ambo to get to where they need to be. Um, and we did a, a tabletop exercise uh, with all the um, agencies, including like, not just a 909 agency, but uh, environment agency and uh, anyone else involved. We did a tabletop at the airport last year, running through various scenarios. What would each department do? You know, on, you know, a typical Tuesday, for example. What's your staffing look like? How quickly could you get people there? What would the contingency be if you run out? It's a bigger emergency. Um, that was really good, and we essentially went through our, our pre-written plans and. It, Gives you some reassurance that actually what we've got would work. Um, so yeah, certainly. That's reassuring to know. I did, did think that it was not, that it was likely that there would be special contingencies for the air, but I just wanted to find out a little bit more. Thank you. Just from the back, do you want the mic? Is there any is there going to be any room in the 101 service? You phone up an hour's wait to report something. Shall I take that? <laughs> uh, if you like, yes, please. We're <laughs> spending a lot of money on it, is the answer. Yeah. 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 So, so that is it. Um, we are seeing improvements, um, is the good news. So, you know, we're not going to hide the fact that the performance has not been where we've wanted it to be for some time. Uh, and there's lots of reasons for that. Um, staff recruitment and retention is a real genuine issue. Um, but um, we bought in in April, uh, we're called a new target operating model, which essentially completely um, reworked uh, how we work contact management from the 101 system, 999 call handlers, dispatchers, teams that record crimes. Uh, so everyone within that command, we had a big shake up to try and make sure we've got the right people in the right places at, at the key demand times. That hasn't landed as smoothly as we would have liked and, and we're still working that through now. Um, but the good news is there is already signs of, of improvement and you know, chief officer team are very into the detail um, of how we're handling calls um, and we meet every month, at, you know, all the senior leaders across the force, we, we meet up and we go through all those stats in minute detail, what's the average call, you know, answering time for a 101 call, what's the average time for a 909 call, where are we missing them, what's our abandonment rate, so that we also look at where people were on the phone and we never get to it and they just leave because they've got bored of waiting, so we're looking at that. Um, and try to identify if those people that left never report for a different way. So obviously you now got live chat and you can report things online. Um, so even looking at the, the message you get when you first dial 101 to try and divert you at the earliest place to the right place that, because most people who call us on 101 are calling to either get an update about a crime or report a crime that's not an emergency. So if we can divert those people on to, to do the online forms that clears up the actual phone lines for people that need to speak to a person. Um, so, and again, the stats tell us that those other reporting methods are going up. So people are getting the message and, and we're certainly getting the message to people and that will again help reduce those, those waiting times. Have you ever tried to fill in one of your forms? Yes. How long did it take you? 
not very long, but then I, I'm probably more used to it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You get a, a, an elderly person who's been told to report antisocial behaviour. They're told it's an hour's wait at least. Yeah. Use the online. If they're not used to a computer, they've got five pages filling. Yeah. So that's so going to take them all an hour. Yeah. By that time, the antisocial behaviour is gone. Yeah. So what's the point of reporting it? Well, a couple of reasons. So the first is so, so we can build a picture, an analytical picture of where our problems are. So just because it's gone, that doesn't mean we don't want to know that. Because actually, if that's happening every Monday at five o'clock, then we can do a bit of proactive problem solving around that. If you call, if you you know hang up the call and don't report it, we never know that happened. So it's gone, we don't know it, and next week it comes back again, and again you get more waiting and you don't report it, and, and the problem goes on, and then you say, what are you doing about it? And I say. I don't know what you're talking about, I'm doing nothing because you haven't told me. Um, but going back to the, the diversion, and as you say, for, for an elderly person who's not particularly au fait with technology, they might want to do it online, but if we can divert all the people that are capable and comfortable doing it online, that frees up the phone lines for you to then, instead of waiting an hour, you're waiting five minutes. But it's not going to fix overnight. This actually happened 23rd of June, 